our review of season two episode 10 it is called the brace bridge dinner and fittingly enough it's a christmas themed episode mm. so that works out nicely for the season so yeah the main storyline in this one is that Suki and lorelei are planning like the brace bridge dinner of the title at this at the inn and what it is, is then they put on like a traditional English style dinner and they have these guests come in who are from like the Bracebridge like society. But it turns out because of the snow, they can't make it. So they decide to hold the meal anyway. But the difference is they invite their friends and family. So you've got a variety of guests. Rory's there helping out. You've got Jess and Luke, you've got Emily and Richard, and it's kind of a way for them to try and reconnect because they've been having problems. Paris ends up going, which is quite good fun. <laughs> yeah. And you've got Lane and Mrs. Kin of like Christmas style references or things that are going on. Then you think of Christmas type thing. And it obviously brings up certain disputes with the characters. You've also got a snowman contest which, competition yeah. which is adorable as well but yeah that's the setup rachel what do you think of this one uh, well i'm glad that this one follows the last one that we did because that was a dud because i actually really like the brace mm. dinner i think it's a fun episode i think it's a fun christmas episode without being overtly christmasy you know it, it, it doesn't feel like they're shoving christmas in our face it's just the setting um and there's a lot of fun to be had in this episode obviously like you said the snowman contest which is very brief but very fun at the beginning you see lorelei and rory working on their snowman who they're trying to make look like bjork and um, obviously there's <laughs> yeah. some guy there with, like, a snow buffer and making this, like, extremely, like, you know, complicated snowman. And they're just like, what the hell? Um, the Bracebridge dinner is obviously a lot of fun because it's not just a traditional English dinner. It's, like, 15th century or something. So they've got Jackson dressed up as, like, Squire Bracebridge. That's oh, good. That's Rune stuff. is back. Don't we always love Rune? Yeah, um, he's good. He's <laughs> Rune, got a lot of that look, stuff. Yeah, Rune is one of those characters that you're obviously supposed to find annoying, but he's also really funny. Um, I love him and Michelle uh, when he's like trying to like like wipe down the uh, the the paintings, and yeah. Michelle's like, "You just take it off the wall." He's like, "Well, I thought it was, uh, like an alarm would go off, like in a Thomas Crown affair." It's like, <laughs> "Well, that would be if this was a museum and you were a man allowed inside museums." I just love that. So that's fun. Obviously, we get a bit of a resolution to the Emily and Richard storyline. Um, when we reviewed uh, the Laura like Cotillion episode, we found out that Richard was having issues at work and um some spoilers alert we find out in this episode that he has retired so that's an interesting development that then goes on you know to have a bit more but seeing him and emily at the dinner is fun and i really like um, you know, the dinner, Lorelei organises the sleigh ride, which is really fun. Now, we do get the start of the Rory Dean-Jess triangle in this. And I think, again, it's important to note that Dean's problems with Jess don't actually start from Rory. They start from Jess himself. Uh, we see Jess getting into a fight with someone at school. Dean tries to break up the fight and Jess tries to start a fight with him. Um, and then Dean complains about that to Rory. We will talk a little bit more about this when we get into the episode, but I also think that this is the episode that starts the slow dumbification of Dean. Um, again, we'll talk about this a bit more as we go on, but this is where we start well, to get the it's whole... It's not hard to be fair, Rachel. But the he's thing not, what they do... He's not the sharpest knife in the But door. he is, in season one, shown to be compatible with Rory, and then in season two, they completely change that, and I just... Okay. But no, but they do. They... Okay, so in this one, Jess asks Rory, what do you and Dean talk about? We've seen them talk before. We've seen her give him Jane Austen to read and Anna Karenina, and we've seen him discussing this with her. We've heard him reference Hunter Thompson, who Logan references later, and Jess even references. We see him talk about how there's a certain music that they both like, which is used in an ad, and they hate how commercial it's become. His original favourite artist was like someone like Liz Fair. They, he knows Willy Wonka and a chocolate fact. Like, he, in season one he gets all of rory's references and then suddenly in season two jess is all like oh what do you guys talk about does he even know bjork and rory's like oh i played him some things and i'm like no he had the same music taste as you i mean you wouldn't be with someone for a year if you didn't have anything in common with them and it just annoys me that they have to do this that they decided to do this to dean in order to push jess forward when they really could have just had rory be attracted to jess i mean it does happen when you're a teenager hell it happens when you're an adult sometimes you know you can be in a relationship with someone 
and be attracted to someone else and suddenly realize that you want to explore a different option. They didn't have to dumb Dean down, but they do. And I, I really hate that uh, because I think that if you look at his characterization in season one and how compatible he and Rory actually are in season one, and then all of a sudden in season two, they're trying to play off like he's too dumb for her. See, I, I don't, her. I mean, I'll take your word for it because to be honest, I don't remember all these references you're describing but i mean when he did do that stuff i got the impression he was doing it because he knew rory liked that stuff so i i got the impression it was more him making the effort than it was actually stuff than he would otherwise and it's fine i like i don't really have a problem with it because it's like if he is different Sometimes I think it's unhealthy if you're too similar anyway. it's. Oh, I agree. I mean, and that's part of my defense of Lorelai and, and um, Luke, is I think the fact that they are different sorts of characters makes them a better couple. Mm. I mean, I, I know when, when it plays out and they actually get together, there's some stuff there which isn't great. But in general, I think their dynamic works for me because they are different from each other. Oh, yeah, and and, and I get other. that. And Dean's obviously a different person to Rory, but my, my issue is more that in season one, he is shown to be compatible with Rory. They obviously have different interests, like they and they do make that clear. Um, you know, he has his bike that he works on, he's into sports. There there is more like he he's more than just, you know, Rory's interest. But all of these instances that we see in season one for some reason just disappear in season two. And suddenly Dean doesn't have anything in common with Rory because they're trying to push Rory and Jess so hard, whereas I feel they didn't need to do that. They could have just kept Dean's characterization. He could have just stayed the same and Jess could have just been a new love interest because she obviously has good chemistry with I, Jess and the fans would buy it, but yeah. I, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I think maybe to defend it a little is then it's possibly representing that, that thing where a relationship is starting to lose its spark, like maybe hers and Dean's is. Mm. And then and I, this I exciting, mm. exciting new guy comes into town and, and yeah. suddenly... I think maybe that's what it's trying to represent. Um, I mean, as we know on this show, sometimes the relationship stuff can be hit and miss because... Yes, that is Especially true. when it comes to when the relationships are sort of falling apart type yeah. thing. Yeah, talk about music. I know there is a band that he references in season one. I cannot remember what it's called, oh, but okay. it's when he first comes over. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just you know, they could have kept that side of Dean and still showed that Rory and Jess were connecting. Because, I mean, obviously the scenes with them are very cute, you know. they, they mm -hmm. we, We're seeing more of the chemistry. I do like that Jess confides to Rory that, you know, that Liz didn't want him to come home. Like, it's showing that he's opening up to someone and can be vulnerable. Um, I don't love Laura, Rory and Jess. Um, that being said, I'm not a huge Rory and Dean shipper either. I just happen to think that their relationship gets a bit unfairly treated. But I do think that she and Jess have got very good chemistry, and you can definitely see the sparks. And um, well, I meant know. I meant to ask you this before. Does because when you started defending Dean the other mm. week, I was a bit. So does that mean you your your ship is Logan for Rory? Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, absolutely, Logan. Um, but if I, if I was if I was to list Rory's boyfriends, for me, it would go Logan, Dean, Jess. Um, I don't yeah, think that exactly. Jess and Rory have the best relationship, but they do have really good chemistry, and you can definitely see the sparks. And, you know, the fact that you see Jess be vulnerable with her, like, you can understand why she would fall for him, even though he's a dick well, to everyone else. Well, here's my thing, partly, mm. and it's partly why I don't really warm to characters like Dean is I think he is a, a bit too clean cut. And, and I a get bit, that. Yeah, and yeah. whereas Je Jess, you know, you've got a He's bit... He's a little of, bit messier. Yeah, bad boy, mm. and he comes yeah. into town. And, um, and I think... Definitely, he deserves some slack because of the stuff oh, he's been definitely. going through. But Absolutely. That, that's probably why it is quite an interesting relationship, because it, yeah. it is this thing of... Although they do connect on certain things, then in in some ways Rory does need to fix him a little bit. Yes, and obviously that's does. never a good dynamic because you don't want, you know, no, that kind no. of dynamic to work out. But no, they have great chemistry. And, I mean, you mentioned the things that he's going through, you know. Obviously there's a plot point in this episode where 
excuse me. Yeah. We find out that, you know, that that Luke contacted Liz to see if he if she wanted Jess to come home for the holidays. And she said no. And that, again, that's really harsh. You know, Lorelai is like, oh, my God, that makes me sick. And, you know, Luke is trying to cover. Again, I just think it's so cute how Luke tries to cover and tries mm. to say that, like, he wanted Jess to stay and how Jess sees through it, but, you know, lets Luke kind of Doesn't keep the anything. lie. It's yeah, cute. Yeah. It shows that yeah, Luke yeah, and yeah. Jess, yeah, are building a dynamic. I also think the two of them are really funny at the actual dinner, like when they get given, like, the soup and they're like, what is the white stuff? Uh, I think it's cream. It's like, and what is the green stuff? I think it's best just picked off. You know, it just shows how similar they are. Um, and I really like that. So there is a, an aspect to this episode that I want to ask you about and ask your opinion on, because I obviously have a lot of opinions about this particular aspect. In this episode, we have an appearance from Chris. And we have Chris inviting Rory to come and stay with him for the winter break. And Lorelai does not tell Rory and does not reveal it to Rory until Rory pushes her to. And for me, I find this very interesting because this is one of those contradictory things where we see Laurel, I say, I always have the door open to you. And then when he tries to walk through the door, she tries to slam it in his face. So what did you think of that whole thing? Do you think that this is something that's probably normal or do you think it's, they're just showing that Laurel is not okay with Sherry, Chris's new girlfriend? Like, did you pay much attention to that aspect or... What was your opinion? Well, because another interesting thing that is then in a way she's done the opposite to what Luke did with Jess. So I think that's actually quite an interesting parallel. Fair but, enough. Um, isn't that great in it? Like it, it sort of makes up for it then she apologizes straight away when it comes yes. out later and yeah, I'm not sure. Like, it's definitely implied that she might have a little bit of jealousy towards Sherry. Mm. And, um, yeah, just in there's some anxiety, like, still some anxiety because, she, like, f f from what we can tell, she hasn't really seen much of Christopher since, you know, since they had Rory years ago. Um I know the writing goes up and down a bit on that, but uh, from what we can tell at this point, she, like she hasn't been in their lives much, or certainly Lorelai wouldn't have seen that much of of him. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so he does mention that he he gets in contact around this time of year, though. Like that's why she asks. Yeah. So we know that there's at least some. And again, this is one of my issues with the writing when it comes to Chris and Lorelai and Rory and that dynamic. Is the show likes to tell us one thing and then show us something else. So it likes to tell us Lorelai always has Rory available to Christopher, but then. When he calls and asks, can I, my daughter, who I don't live with and never see, and you have 24-7, if she can come and stay for a couple of nights, and Lorelai's all like, this is my time of year with you. It's like, Lorelai, honey, your daughter lives with you yeah, full but... time. She doesn't see her husband, her, her, her father. So, mm. Well, yeah, but I, I don't necessarily think that's contradictory writing, because... There's nothing to say than, than she doesn't have a note, like, you know... I don't think it necessarily contradicts the other thing. It's just then, then in this case, I think she's just anxious, maybe partly because he does have a new woman in the picture and maybe she, she is. And again, I'm not excusing her actions. I think mm. she acts badly, but I don't necessarily see a contradiction between the two. Fair enough, fair enough. As we I go think on this is just two, like an extreme yeah. example where she's... She gets nervous because of a particular... Possibly. I will say, Lorelai is oddly, like, protective of her daughter. Like, she really does not like sharing Rory, which comes up a lot over the series. Um, well, but, yeah. Mm. I mean, I can understand it because I think, from her point of view, she did raise her. And I think... Once again, it's getting into semantics about how, how much Chris has been involved in, in Rory's life. Um, and, and, I mean, obviously, years ago, 
I think from what I can understand, it was sort of a mutual decision, but it's like... No, they pretty much say that it was Lorelai's decision, as pretty much everything to do with Rory is Lorelai's decision. Um, again, th- th- this is a thing with, with the writing when it comes to Chris. It it definitely goes up and down. Um, and as we go over this season, because he will pop up more this season, we can talk more about it. Well, but... but they because pretty they much were... confirm that it was Lorelai who said no. I don't know if I would buy that, because she was only 16 at the the time so i don't think she's gonna say no to if the father of the son of her child wants to stick around and help raise it i don't think a 16 year old would say that you know it's all thing i can imagine later on if you're a bit older you have more misgivings we we don't get the full like uh, unfortunately mm. we never get a full flashback showing exactly what happened. The only thing we have are hints, and there is a season three episode where we do actually see some flashbacks to younger Lorelai and Chris. And from what I can tell, Chris yeah, thought that they were going to be married up until the point that Rory was born. He was still thinking under the impression that they were going to get married and live in the Gilmore's place, and he was going to go work for Richard. Like he was completely mm. prepared to do that. And several people have said um, that Lorelai said no. She turned him away and she said, I don't want to marry you. And then, again, I know we don't count the revival, but unfortunately it is there. And in there, Rory confirms that Lorelai said she wanted to raise Rory alone um, without Chris. So I, I think, to be fair, like the way it's always come across to me is that 16 is very young to be having the child and it's very hard to be raising the child with with another with another person so i always got the impression although she made the decision to keep rory because i guess she felt that was the right thing to do but like i think that that plays a part in in her decision and and obviously we don't know how well the relationship was going but like suddenly having an, a new having a baby out of the blue can obviously you know bring tensions up so mm. this is definitely something we'll talk about more as we go through the series but i have always had a little bit of an issue with the way that Lo- the Lorelai's background with her parents and chris were written like i always thought it would have made much more sense if chris had left her outright and if her parents had kicked her out of the house because then that would have been the absolute yes i have to raise this daughter on my own but neither of those happened chris was willing to stay with her and marry her and her parents were willing to let her stay in the house and raise rory even after she rejected their plans so this whole i went out and raised my daughter by myself not trying to take anything away from that like obviously that's a very big thing and it's very admirable that laurel i did that but my issue is that she chose to do that like she had options she came from a very privileged background that could have helped her and she chose to leave that environment and go out and be a single mother like it wasn't like she was forced out on the streets by her parents or rejected by the father of her child and how about the emily and richard stuff how'd you go with that stuff did you enjoy that aspect yeah it's good it's good Mm. i I do like um yeah no you can see why emily gets upset um yes Because it's almost like if he just told her, she would have been probably fine with it or probably more supportive. Yes, because he just drops it at the table that he's hired. She didn't even know. Poor woman. (laughs) Mm. Yeah, so that stuff is good. And then I do like the scene with her going to the the, um, Lorelei and Rory's room and the three of them in the same room. and Uh and I love that scene. With Lorelai and Emily putting on their co- their night crew That's and they're good. making the exact same motions and Rory's just like, whoa, behold my future. And Lorelai's like, oh, ugh. and she just throws the night cream away and she's like, oh, no. So I thought that was funny. <laughs> so, there's, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff with the guests at the inn. As, as mm. we said, the Jackson stuff is very funny. And Rune. <laughs> Rune, yeah, he's very entertaining. Harris is once again funny. I, I like then she's obviously bringing Rory like paperwork. School work on the weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but again, I, I like then Rory talks her into staying. It shows yeah. that they are starting to get closer. I think. Yeah. 
again, Rory's such a saint. She tries so much with Paris in these early seasons. Like, she just has the patience of a friggin' saint, and she's so sweet to her. Uh, and once again, uh, some good Paris, because I, I like her pick in, like, the inconsistencies yeah, in, in the so period. Paris, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so good. Um, there's some there's... really funny stuff at dinner at the actual dinner like i love mrs kim and lane sitting across from a babette and maury and mrs K- mrs kim's like nobody says grace and lane's like oh i think oh, they do i just grace. silently yeah. and she's like did you say silent grace and babette's like Haha, good one and she's like yeah yeah. Yeah. So, yeah mrs kim can scare anyone into being religious <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's good yeah there's mm. a lot of good stuff i like the they, they do like the sledge thing that's really nice and then yeah. paired off in sledges and and the the snowman at the start because actually one of my favourite lines is when she says we're competing against the Michelangelo of snowmen, and mm-hmm. and I can't remember which way round it is, but the other one says, oh, I think Lorelai says, yeah, whereas we're Ernest built the snowman, so yeah. that's really funny. <laughs> I will say it's a bit weird because it's the second episode in the row and you get a Shining reference because there's, there's, yes, there's one yes. in the last one. So that's a bit yeah. weird, but okay. Yeah, but, we just like The Shining, except instead of Jack Nicholson, we have Rune. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's lots of good like pop culture references in, in this one and lots of fun with mm. the setup and... And I do like, I mean, you already mentioned it, but I do like the, the scene with Rory and Jess on the sledge. And... That is a cute scene. Yeah. yeah. And again, just building up their their dynamic and their relationship. And I think it seems like that are important because Jess, bless his little heart, and he, he does have absolute reason, but he's a real dink most of the time, mm. you know. So I like that we see that with Rory, he is a bit different because if he was just a dink, then you'd be like, well, why does she like him? So I like that we get to see a slightly more vulnerable side of Jess around Rory and it shows that's where the connection is coming from so I do and, like that and he's he's obviously nice about the snowman like yes. saying you, and and it's definitely implied at the end and it's him who's destroyed the other snowman yes. yes and and I like then they play the Bjork song as well yes I do too oh human behavior have yeah. you ever seen the music video for that for that song it is it is a trip, man. I think Bjork was smoking all sorts of drugs when she did that music video. <laughs> I've seen it. Yeah, I think so. I've seen her live, actually, a couple of times. Really? Yeah, that would was, be cool. Yeah, because a few years at the O2 where she was doing, like, a 3D style show. That cool. that, that was really good. But, mm. yeah. I always liked Bjork. She was a weird little chick back in the day, yeah. but she was very 90s alternate. Yeah. Yeah, she no, fun. she's done some good stuff. So, mm. Yeah. So, yeah, no, this yeah. is a really solid episode, I think. A really fun Christmas episode. And because the last episode was so lacklustre, it's nice to bring it back up with this one. Yeah, no, this is a, a fun one. Good use of all the characters, really. Who, yeah. By the way, who's the guy, Shaw Hair, who was in the Bootsy? last episode? Yeah, who's is he yeah. related to someone or just like... He a... runs the newspaper stand. Ah, oh, okay. He's just a character. He's just one of the Stars Hollow residents. Um, yeah. And... Yeah, he just kind of pops up from time to time. <laughs> yeah, because it, even Taylor's having a good time in this episode. I know. And, and that very rarely <laughs> happens. He's it's very rarely he's enjoying himself. But yeah, no, no, this is a good episode. This this picks the standard back up, definitely. And yeah, absolutely. A, a pr- pretty fun Christmas-themed episode, so yeah. That's Gilmore Girls once again. We're, well, almost halfway through this season. Now. Yeah. So let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe as always. And share us out on social media. You can support me at patreon.com slash board now for just a dollar a month. So, Rachel, if you want to plug your channel. Guys, you can follow me, Rachel McDonald, video essays on TV shows and media. Uh, going off the segue that we had, I will eventually be doing video essays defending both Chris and Dean. So we'll see what Keith makes of those when they eventually come out. Um, but my Tumblr and my Twitter usually are linked through my YouTube and Keith usually puts a link in the description. So come and follow me everywhere for controversial opinions. <laughs> Okay, thanks guys and happy holidays, I guess. Keep watching Gilmore Girls. We'll see you again soon. Bye.